Now, fast forward a full month, and you've had the soul bearing relationship with Joe for an entire month, and it's been the most beautiful and wonderful and crazy month you've ever had in your entire life. And to make things even better, you're only one month away from taking over the company. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, kind of is. So like I said, you're one month away from taking over the company, when randomly, the owner walks into the company one day. Now, you've never actually met him, because he's, you know, a multi-billionaire, kind of hands-offish, lets your boss do the day-to-day -day kind of things, and he's, you know, back big picture. So you've never met him, but when you see him, you're so excited. Because, I mean, he's probably here to make a big deal about you, to officially welcome you as the boss, and to talk about all your wonderful attributes, and just go on and on, etc., etc. He begins things by saying, Hmm. Well, not very pleased with the direction this company's heading, so at the end of the month, Joe's taken over, and you're gone. <laughs> Man, you always expected this guy to be old and boring, but he is hilarious. Did you hear that? Joe taking over? Now that is funny. But slowly, in a painfully heart-wrenching few minutes, you realize the owner is completely serious. And you can only stand there and, and watch as all of your dreams, everything that you've ever worked for in your entire life, is being ripped from your hands and given to someone who, quite frankly, doesn't deserve it. And it's not like you get to keep your current job. Oh no, you are gone, gone. They not only are firing you, but they're taking your life savings and all of your retirement and just handing it to Joe on a silver platter. On some level, you're probably thinking, well, that's not even legal, but at the same time, you're so shell-shocked, you can't even do anything about it. Now, your boss, the one who's retiring, is furious. He loves you, and he can't stand this Joe guy. And there is no way that he's about to turn over his company to some unqualified ex-Amish tomato sucker. Later, your boss informs you of this evil plan that he has to make sure that Joe not only will not get this job, but will never get another job again for the rest of his life. And you can finally claim what is truly and rightfully yours. All of your flesh is screaming to join the plan with your boss, but your soul, the part of you that's connected to Joe in a way that you can't explain or separate even if you wanted to, in your soul, it knows that the, Joe, that the job rightfully belongs to Joe. Now that is a covenant relationship. And that's the kind of relationship that Jonathan and David share. So let's see what happens in the next part of the story. Will you please open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 18 through 42. 1 Samuel 20, verses 18 through 42. If you don't have a Bible, there should be one at the end of the pew that you can use. And if you don't have a Bible of your own, feel free to take that one home with you. Again, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 18 through 42. So as, as I go through and read this, I'm going to kind of stop and translate it back to the Joe Foss story. Okay, starting with verse 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon festival. You will be missed because your seat will be empty. Now we kind of started on that part a little bit last week when Todd was preaching. And basically the new moon festival happens every single month, but you celebrate with your family only once a year. And David and Jonathan have devised a plan where David is going to say that he's at the new moon festival, but really he's hiding <laughs> by a rock. So basically, we'll say it's kind of like the 4th of July. Um, they're telling Saul that you're at the fourth, or you're telling Saul, the boss, that Joe is at the 4th of July, and really he's just hiding by a big rock in the park. Okay, in verse 19. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid, when the trouble began, and wait by the stone of Eagle. Again, this is the big rock in the park where Joe is hiding. Verse 20. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it, and one as though I were shooting at a target. So we'll say, people don't really shoot arrows, so we'll say he's going to the park to practice his frisbee. Verse 21. Then I will send a boy and say, go find the arrows. If I say to him, look, the arrows are on this side of you, bring them here. 
then come, because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe, and there is no danger. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you, then you must go, because the Lord has sent you away. So basically, they just devise a little code. You know, if I throw the frisbees past the boy, then you have to leave. You know, they didn't have, like, texting or cell phones. They had to have a code, I guess, because they couldn't just call each other. Okay, verse 23. And about the matter that you and I discussed, remember the Lord is witness between you and me forever. So David hid in the field, and when the new moon festival came, the king sat down to eat. He sat in the customary place by the wall, opposite Jonathan, and Abner sat next to Saul. But David's place was empty. Saul said nothing that day, for he thought, something must have happened to David to make him ceremonially unclean. Surely he is unclean. Basically, your boss thinks that Joe didn't show up because he forgot to take a shower. Verse 27. But the next day, the second day of the month, David's place was empty again. Then Saul said to his son Jonathan, Why hasn't the son of Jesse come to the meal, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go, because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town, and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away to see my brothers. That is why he's not come to the table. So then you have to tell your boss that Joe's not at your important business meeting because he wanted to watch the fireworks with his brother. So then Saul says in verse 20, Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse and rebellious woman, don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of the mother who bore you? As long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he must die. So here the boss is basically saying, you're an idiot. Don't you realize that if, if, as long as Joe's still around, you will never get this job and you will be fired. So bring him here and I will destroy his career. Verse 32. Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan asked his father. But Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him. And Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. So you stick up for Joe and your boss gets so angry that he threatens to kill him. Um, to ruin your career as well. 